The clock is ticking on farm program sign up. Michigan Soybean has a new look and get your ag labor questions answered during the 2021 Farm Employment Seminars. I'm Janelle Bros, and this is Farm News 5. Farm News 5 is brought to you by Ford. The clock is ticking. Farmers now have less than a month to enroll in 2021 farm programs. 2021 sign-up looks a little different in a number of ways. Growers are signing up for one year of coverage versus two or five year signups of the past. Commodity prices are lower than they were during previous signups, and farmers can sign up for the new enhanced coverage option in addition to the supplemental coverage option. You gotta kinda get with your crop insurance agent and see what those prices are gonna be to buy this SEO because the SEO program uh, does cost some money and it depends upon what underlying crop insurance level that you have. If you had an 80% underlying policy when you're correct with crop insurance, the SEO goes to 86%. Well, what's that cost going to be? You can get a lot higher revenue, uh, but some counties, it depends on the farm, it depends on the county, that might cost $10, $12, $14 dollars to buy that. Other places, other locations, only 2 or $3 dollars, uh, to buy that SEO program. And so I can't give a blanket recommendation of what makes the most sense because it depends upon which county you're in and what the what your individual yields are, and, and it'll, it'll drive what those actuary tables are and what that price is. If you're for sure you're not, you don't buy crop insurance and you don't want to use the SCO, it's too expensive or you just don't want it for whatever reasons, and then it comes back to a much simpler decision, uh, and that's between PLC and our county at the FSA office. And for uh, uh, our, our tenancy is, is, is PLC on corn and on wheat, because the prices are down where they might get down that low uh, and start triggering on, on PLC. Uh, for soybeans, because we've got a higher than the reference price, the benchmark price uh, is, is 895 versus the 840, which is the reference price, the PLC kicks in at 840. The, the revenue benchmark uh, revenue price that's used for the uh, our county is that higher price. And so um, we probably want to look at the our county uh, for soybeans would be the preferred one in looking at if you're not going to look at this SEO. Michigan State University has developed an online Excel-based farm bill calculator that will allow producers to enter their operations CCC yields and FSA base acres to identify the best combination of enrollment options for their farm. The tool can be found on the farm management section of MSU's College of Agriculture and Natural Resources website. Up next, Michigan Soybean has a new look. There's torque. Then there's 1,050 pound feet of available best in class torque. There's towing. Then there's up to 37,000 pounds of available best in class towing. There's backing up a trailer. Then there's backing up with available class exclusive pro trailer backup assist. In other words, there are trucks. And then there's the new Ford Super Duty, the most capable heavy duty pickup truck ever built. The Michigan Soybean Association and Michigan Soybean Committee have a new staffer, new digs, and a new look. We're really wanting to show the partnership between our two organizations um, more visually speaking. That was a, another catalyst for this change was to take both the Soybean Checkoff and the Soybean Association and, and have them really look like partners because they are. They, they really fulfill um, two different roles in working toward the same goal to better the soybean industry for, for all farmers in Michigan. Along with the branding change, the Soybean Checkoff changed its name slightly by dropping the word promotion and becoming the Michigan Soybean Committee. The new name will be displayed on the sign outside of the Michigan Soybean Office, which is moving from Frankenmuth to St. John's in April. This move puts us at the center of all of the action, right? This move puts us in St. John's, Michigan. Um, we're moving into the corporate headquarters of AgriLiquid. Uh, they've been, the AgriLiquid family has been very welcoming to us um, and we're very excited to, to create our own space within their building. Um, and, and really, like I said, get into the uh, center of, of everything, right? The, all, the majority of the Commodity organizations are based in that centrally located Lansing area. 
Um, of course, the legislature is there from an association standpoint, being able to be closer to the state legislature and make those contacts with the uh, legislators is very important. Um, and it is an opportunity for our directors and other stakeholders to network and provide some additional partnerships and collaborations. Rounding out the Michigan soybean team is Caitlin Fusilier, who will be working as their outreach specialist. Caitlin's main role will be to continue our long history of our soybeans go to school kits. She will also be working for our uh, trade shows and any appearances, uh, breakfast on the farm, other events that we have traditionally participated in from an agricultural industry perspective. Um, as well as really refine some of our tangible educational materials, right, for consumers. Michigan soybean and the soybean industry is, is the third largest commodity group in the state um, behind dairy and corn. And in part of the branding, part of the move, um, part of a, a magazine overhaul, all of these things are really to um, show up as number three, right? We are very excited about all of the opportunities for soybeans in Michigan. Up next, get your ag labor questions answered during next week's farm employment seminars. Yep, we cover Michigan from sandbars to sand dunes, cider mills to skiing hills, and farm towns to downtowns. We cover up north, and yep, we know exactly where that is. Yep, we cover Michigan because we're Michigan's insurance company. Farm Employment Seminars are on tap for next week. From 11 to 1 on February 23rd, 24th, and 25th, farmers can tune into the virtual seminars for a deep dive into Department of Labor Employment Initiatives and Compliance Priorities, COVID Employer Requirements, and Federal Immigration Legislation. So the Farm Employment Seminars are an annual effort each year. It's a partnership between Varnum Law between Michigan Farm Bureau and between Great Lakes Ag Labor Services to really provide farmers with a deeper dive into labor issues and specifically issues that concern compliance. And so we appreciate the partnership to be able to provide the service to our members. And it really is for those farms that are looking for that additional information. The seminars supplement the annual Agricultural Employment Compliance Guide created by Varnum Law, Michigan Farm Bureau, and Great Lakes Ag Labor Services. Matched with it, these seminars to really review all the substance and resources within that guide and highlight for our clients the things that we've experienced over the years, the question over that past year. So all of the hot topics, what's been uh, new in, in inspections, what's been new in potential claims so that our subscribers are up to date with what's next and what to get prepared for the next season. Last year was a perfect example of why any farmer who has an employee should be a subscriber to the employment guide. Large number of overlapping regulations when it comes to COVID, when it comes to just general workplace requirements that a farm doesn't matter your size. If you have an employee, you need to be compliant. So I think even more so than in years past, if we saw a great time for farmers to see tremendous value out of the employment guide, it was last year. So it's really, it's a really great seminar for any farmer that has labor on their farm. In order to join the webinars, you must be an Agricultural Employment Compliance Guide subscriber. To subscribe or to register for the webinars, visit varnumlaw.com. Michigan's food processing and agricultural workers are getting closer to COVID-19 vaccinations. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services says workers will be able to receive the first vaccine beginning March 1st, two months earlier than originally predicted. MDHHS says the revised schedule is intended to help ensure the health and safety of Michigan's essential food and agriculture workers and keep the state's food supply chain moving. For more news and videos, visit michiganfarmnews.com or the Michigan Farm Bureau channel on YouTube. With Farm News 5, I'm Janelle Bros. Have a great week of farming.